you're still watching ways now your network is secure your computer is up and running and your printer is jam free why because you've got an awesome sys admin or maybe it's a whole it department keeping your business up and running so say it loud say it proud happy system admin day oh day. so happy happy, so happy system system admin day. to all our people at the the back end that people cannot yes. see they are the ones in fact if something goes wrong we go blank, yes. you know. So they are the ones making things happen. And sometimes we do not really, really appreciate them. I mean, That's appreciate true. them enough. So I was so happy when I saw this, um, this um, systems day. My brother-in-law actually is the head IT of a top oil company. Uh -huh. And trust me, when everybody is going to holiday and all of that, most times, no, they can't. you know, he can, can. I mean, he, he, he cannot go. I mean, have he holidays. has to be online 24-7, monitoring a lot of things, even during holiday or no holiday oh, wow. you know he's always working so i can imagine yeah. the kind of tons of work you know that he has to monitor they are the superheroes of our absolutely they don't yes, know they they people and people don't appreciate no, some them, of them no some of them no if you call it <laughs> guy they will take a long time to come to you because they know that you can't go anywhere without them, without no, 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 them. They yes. know. Yeah. but they really really try because yes. they keep the engines running even no, to even just make it possible for you to work from home, mm -hmm. somebody has to be working hard to make absolutely. sure that the name is Yes, absolutely. So, Hi guys. happy we... systems admin day to, to all you. our yeah. IT gurus. Yes. <laughs> all right, so Sansi, what did you find for us in the news? Okay, so, um, well, in the news, if, as we remember, uh, a few weeks ago, federal government said uh, 603 repentants, uh, Boko Haram repentants, who have undergone the... Um, who have completed the de-radicalization program would be reintegrated into the communities now. So widows and uh, displaced persons are lamenting, telling federal government this cannot be possible because um, they're also saying that the federal government is spending a lot of funds and resources trying to reintegrate them into the society and neglecting them. So some of them are making statements like, uh, my children are fatherless. Insurgents must be prosecuted. Uh, I'm sad government is re releasing insurgents who killed my husband. So generally, they are just not, they're just not happy about mm -hmm. it. So that they're like, why would you um, appreciate people in the bush above us who are the ones, like, they committed the crime. They should pay for it. Why are we the ones suffering and you're being kind and extending mercy to them? So that's basically what the story is about. For, for and, me, and I get them. Yeah, for me, this is... You know, you're in between the devil and the deep blue sea. Mm. Because really, even if we want to prosecute them, do we have the capacity to hold them in our prisons? Mm. You get. And w will there be reforms happening there? And also, have you, the reforms or whatever they went through, the deradicalization de that they went through, yes. is it enough to make them live in the society? What was the origin for joining the radical group in the first place? Has that been addressed? Mm. What's the probability mm -hmm. that they won't go back? So it's really not an easy topic to talk about. It's really not an easy subject to pick sides. It's a tough one. And I, and I do really um, can almost say that I feel what they're going through, having to yeah. see the people that cause like, so much exactly, pain and where murder. our tax is on them to train them. But then again, it's not that easy to decide what to do. It's actually very, it's a tough one. And I, I think... Um, I keep saying that with things like this, we really need a lot of creativity and yeah. you have to really think through certain things before you take a decision because the psychological effect on the person that has lost a loved one as a result of the people don't you people don't know or people think that they can get them away them with things. So it's yeah, it's like like you rightly said, the devil and the deep blue sea. <laughs> well, okay, so what did you find for us in the news? Okay, so for me, what I found in the news is from the Daily Post and it says that Southern Cardinal why insecurity in my state attracts more attention from El Rufai. Now, what was my reaction when I saw this? My reaction when I saw this, I was first and foremost very upset. You know, you're trying to say, oh, I'm the special one. I'm not the special one. It's happening everywhere. Last week, 39 people from three local governments died. Wow. Okay. And before you were governor, these things have been happening. It's not today that we know that these things are laced with religious and ethnicity undertones yes. undertones so what are you telling us really i should be expect this is a very intelligent man okay mm -hmm. that has occupied various positions and has shown that he could, i expect more from him i expect that before he even took up the mantle to be governor of this state knowing the problems that exist then you should have a solution ready so there is no, for me, there is no new factor that has been introduced since 2015. Mm. So why are you coming to tell us mine is special because of this and this and that? And it, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. So you should be telling us of 
valid solution. solutions. Mm. Mm. You know, as a as a bona fide uh, Kaduna state indigenous, because I was born and I grew up there. I've been through different series of communal, I mean, sorry, religious wars and crisis and all of that. And let me tell you, I think when Makarefi was governor, when I was a lot younger, you know, I saw a lot of promptness because, you know, for every time the religious war broke, maximum two days, you know, they're able to curtail and all of that. We knew that it is difficult to, I mean, to, to keep calm in those kind of situations. But he was able to, to suppress it and with the then help of then President Obasanjo. So it was a, it was um, a it, it was a collaboration between, between the, the federal government and the, and the state. state government. They were able to curtail. They were able to curb and nip it in the um, bud. But right now, I don't even know what the what the the, the causes of this war. I think is. it was the air well, so the latest one is attack by headsmen. Mm. And the people are saying that they are tired. And I expect it that is you really don't come sickening. up with excuses. My neighbor lost his farmland to this people right so sometimes it i think now it has even transcended um what's it called it has transcended um religious crisis it's more now for economic reasons you want to drive some people out of their farmlands to be able to they can't go you know, to, they, to take they can't go to possession church, of their you know, property for me i i kind of see that this is a typical situation in nigeria so it's not just for uh um, um kaduna or el Rufai. this is what we face all the time elections are coming up and you feed us christmas wish list i will do this i will solve this and then you get into office and we end up not seeing no you i know when you, when you get into office you now tell us of the problem that we already know mm. well, yeah like there. you knew about it was part of your campaign and we really list. had hopes with you know, Rufai because and of his, his intelligence and yeah. his previous experience yeah. and also another question i have which is like the elephant in the room nobody almost no one talks about it why do we have most of these things happening mostly in the north what is it about the north that has to because it's not it's not just in the north that we have like multiple religions we have a lot of them in the west we have a lot of them in the east you know but perhaps the the mixture i, I don't know but why we are, we are going to deal we're going to deal time. extensively on southern cardinal on sunday i think that's our, okay. our, our okay. focus so hopefully we'll be able to answer some of these um, questions my own story is quite simple and short i mean i was really really disgusted when i saw the post I, and i have been saying it you know i'd, I'd, I'd said it you know different platforms have said that why would we spend so much money on building tents so the story is 75 million dollars within 10 weeks right in ghana they built an ultra modern hospital within 10 weeks in ghana with 7.5 million dollars 7.5 million dollars converting it to naira is about 2.85 billion naira while our brethren here in nigeria our 10 weeks, brethren. you know they built tents and they shipped medical equipment tents that are temporal, right? For 32 billion. Who are we kidding exactly? Uh, who are? No, because I keep saying this thing that do we want to truly solve? I thought COVID-19 came and it was the perfect opportunity to solve the healthcare problems that we have in our country. We know we have healthcare structural deficits, right? You built a tent for 32 billion, right? And I'm not your counterparts here. You know, they're not, they're not supposed to be up to you in terms of, okay, you are the giant of Africa. We're able to build an ultra-modern ultra hospital. I think our government should wake up and smell wow. the coffee. This is, so the, this is crazy. This is, is the reason this, why people are happen? fainting when they are being interrogated. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> this is the reason that's why so they're true. Yes. This is the reason why they're fainting. This is the reason why someone cannot show you the bridge that they budgeted for and they allocated and someone said that this build, bridge has been built. So I think that we're still answering the same questions. So does this well, have, is this only, uh, uh, is this question only to federal government or does it have anything to do with um, the company or project I managers think this, or this question people goes just to handling? Nigerians, Nigeria. to the human yes. beings. Yes. Governments are not robots, they are not animals, they are, they are not aliens. They are yeah, Nigerians. because we see this playing out in contracts. A contract is giving out for 10 billion and then the actual amount that would be used is like 2 billion. So what happens, even to, gets to, two billion, even so what even happens to the 8 million? It's like, it just keeps well, going down. I take my cut, it goes down, I take my cut you know all of these things because i mean for me it's it's really tiring but today our focus is technology <laughs> all right so we'll see you after the break <laughs>